hi friends and golfers, Eric Schulver, EGSGolf, EGSGolf.com. I hope everyone's well. So, been on a little theme here lately, kind of talking about risks, and it all started off when I got into uh, shafting, the, the, the series I did on it. And, and you know, shafting is basically, I want, when people come through the ball, at impact, we want to be like this, shaft lean. So, we're coming down on the ball, in the ball first, and then compressing the ball and then the ground, which is ideally with the heavy going iron here, you may be four inches past, which would be your final low point. Um, I think Brooks is crazy with like a wedge, with like eight. So you think about that four ahead with the, uh, let's say, iron of a seven iron. You go to a driver where things completely change and we're going to hit up, your lowest point is behind the ball, right? So you're going up. So we want to be hitting down on these balls of a trajectory going down this club with our hands leading. So what do I typically see out of golfers? I have a theory that uh, well over 95% of amateurs do this. This is how they square the club is. So I'm casting. And they're behind the ball usually, or maybe even if they're lucky. Okay? So Two options to close the club base, I, I believe, mainly, right? A simple, simple way. One, I can do this. I can go to the top, and I can cast it like that, so I end up like here, right? Or the other one is I can go to the top, and look what I do here. Watch this club face. Look, look where I'm at here. How's that compared to the person doing this? See how it's still open, and then they come in and have to dump it like that with their hands. So, um, big difference is one, I'm turning the shaft, which I like to call turning the shaft to close this club face. Way different than rolling your hands that you hear all the time, uh, like down here trying to roll your hands. Before. Boy, that is a prop position, very, very hard to meet. How, how much do I do it? And, anyways, here's the point by down here. Things are moving so fast, we have no control of what we're doing. That's why it's so important to set us, ourselves up in a great position. So, I've been talking a little bit about trail wrist extension uh, in some videos I've been doing, which is look at the trail wrist right here when coming down. It's extended. So I got this, this crease here, right? And when I come down to the ball, guess what I want? I want to still have that in there like that. I don't want to be like this. If I'm like that, I'm in big trouble, okay? I want to be like this, and then I want to try to, if I'm only going up about here, I would try to hold it past there. So, drill here. Now, here's the thing. When you're playing golf, okay, and you're here, and let's say you get here and you've got this compression here, when you eventually get to probably here, it's going to break. Like, we can't stop it. Keep calm, but stop it. Okay? So, there's just too much going on, too much speed. Um, so... It's going to eventually break, but we obviously in golf practice things different. We want to try to exaggerate fields. So as I've shown you some people in videos before, we're going to do this. We're way back, a little dorsi flexion, and then we're going to come through and hit some balls with it like that, holding our wrist angle, okay? Now, the, the next step up would be grabbing a little uh, pool noodle. Uh, and on this pool noodle, you can do a couple different things. You can grab some here. Okay, so the pool noodle, we're going to be able to tell ourselves how we did. So if I go like this, I'm going to hit. Otherwise, I'm going to come like this, get it here, here, and I want to feel here when I get there. What is the big difference here in that picture? Look where I'm at here. Not like this. Okay, so another, just stick something in the ground, put this over a pool noodle protected. What you'll do is you'll just... Same as that other drill, you get this going back to about here, and here, hit that and stop. You're going to find out your hands are left, if you're looking at it in a, in a video, you're going to see if you come through, the hands are going to get hidden by the body, but you'll still see the club head. If you don't, you see this passing like this, coming through, in your video, you're, you're in trouble, you're not doing it, right? So, in action, you would go like this. So I would probably rehearse it first here, try to get here, and then 
here, right? If I want to do a two hand, like that, or one, I, I love the one hand. We can go to two. I want to get there, right here, right? And what do I do? I want to rehearse come here and then here. Okay? Here. So I knocked that down, but you can just see perfectly solid. Um, negative 2.8 attack angle. I mean, only from this side to this side, knocked a 7 iron at 16.8 launch angle. Um, I mean, it just carried, carried that, or 54 yards carried at 98, 91.8 yards. So both point, so I wouldn't swing as hard coming through it, was only uh, two and a half ahead. Um, so when we go a little harder, it's obviously going to, going to be different. But if you're having trouble with this, I would really focus in on doing these. Get here first, which is our takeaway. We want to have a one-piece takeaway we want to think about, right? And then from there, get to here, hands ahead, and here. I want you to watch this closely in the video, though, so you can check yourself on video. Watch how the handle's hidden behind my body, right? And where's the club head? It's still outside, right? That's what you're going to look for. The hand's hidden, okay? So, something else I've been pretty strong on my whole life to teach is how our bodies move, right? If I, and it's, it's, it's what I'm teaching the first thing, if, if, if something's wrong with anybody, because this has to be fixed right away. So if I take the club back like this, you think I can come through with good shaffling, turn the club and shaffling, I mean, not going to work, okay? What are you going to do from here? You're going to start sliding, and you're going to cast this thing right away, and here's the problem for all you. You top the ball, hit it fat, hit it thin. Why is that happening? Any idea? One is you're going here, way up the back foot, but let's say you're not. Let's say you're staying nice and centered by the time you get to the top. If this club is traveling like this, we're casting, look at it down here. It's coming up by the time it gets to the ball. So if you don't time it right, you're either going to hit hit behind the ball, or you're going to catch it on the way up, and you can time it out and you'll hit it great. So there's, there's the reason, okay? We're casting doing that, so the club is rising instead of going in like this. So look how that's going down first. See how different that is, folks? So, got to knock this out if you are doing any of this kind of stuff. If you are here, it's big trouble. What are we trying to do? We're trying to turn right over the ball okay so well, those of you go oh i gotta get weight shift back there i don't know who said weight shift what about pressure i can't put down more pressure than i am right now what time staying center i'm pushing so hard in the ground if i have 90 percent right here what do people have when they go like this that's mass movement there's no pressure no power so think about using pressure when you turn push in as hard as you can off that think about the power you're going to generate from that okay Pressure, not mass. You're always trying to build pressure in your feet wherever you're trying to get to. So on the way back, you're going to your trail heel, and most likely you're going to go from toe to heel after that, okay? Because your toe is going to allow you to push off, push back, and push this hip backwards so you can stay right, so you're not really extending. Push this backwards, comes up, helps itself you know, clear, right angle, and boom, we're gone. So, shaffling started off with wrist extension, but folks, this has got, this is a must, okay? Now for most of you, it's not going to be easy to do. But if you do this every day, guess what you'll do? You'll get it, right? So, let's say you're just standing here. You want to figure out how to do this. Open the club face up. So, open, come here. Now, I want you to come through to impact. Right here. Now, look at this. Ah, how about that? You like to be there? So this clips right out in front of you, rotate it open, so you can start right here with your wrist fully hinged. Turn. Now go to impact. Why is this good? Okay, because most of you, the first time you do is you're gonna end up like this. What's the problem? Where's this club face point? It's straight up. What do we gotta do? Rotate that shaft to get this club face like that. So when we go down, look at I'm just ready to nail it. Folks, any questions, Eric Schulberg, uh, you can send me an email, ejsgolf, Eric, Eric, ejsgolf.com, but check out my website too, ejsgolf.com. You know if you have any questions, the same, but most common, yeah. Thank you very much.